Hello, everyone. How are we doing tonight? All right, it is Monday, and I'm hoping that YouTube is going to get those notifications out. If not, no worries if you're watching the replay. Let me know in the comments that you're watching the replay. And if you do see that red live button there, that means you are watching me live. Now, normally my new video of the week comes out on Monday. Uh, last week I had just gotten back from the cruise, so I needed the extra day until Tuesday. Hey, Karen Walker, we need to chat, girl. Um, this week, I broke the charging port on my laptop, which I kind of need to finish uploading uh, my YouTube videos. So, that will be going live again on Tuesday, tomorrow. So, I swapped, and I decided to go live tonight, since my video is going to premiere tomorrow night. So, Tomorrow night will be part two of the tiered tray decor series. I have a new uh, way to make a tiered tray for you. I also have uh, St. Patrick's and spring tiered tray decor. So I hope you're excited. Am I fuzzy? You guys see me okay? Hello everyone that's hopping on. Thank you for the thumbs up. I see a few of you have done that. So I am going to do a couple projects tonight, one with ink, one with paste, with a couple of our newer Magnolia stencils. Oh, thank you, Rita. You're so sweet. Um, yeah, and then we can chat. I can have any questions uh, and answer any questions that you have now. If you close the chat and you see where it says Monarch Mom DIY is live. If you see the word more, click that, and you should see where it says, let's make some fun projects with new Magnolia stencils, monarchmomdiy.com. That is my site where you can go for the stencils. And then it says all my links, and there's a link tree there. Does everybody see that? Maybe depending on the device you're on, you can't get there right now. But if you go to my link tree, you're going to see this. I'll try and show you. Okay, the lighting's a little funky, but it's got my Magnolia website. It's got my Magnolia Business Basics Facebook group. I've been talking about this group. Some of you have asked questions about becoming a creator. You can go there. My YouTube channel, you're already there. Amazon Storefront, and then a few other things I am an affiliate for. But the important links, the most important ones, are up at the top. And then I also do have a link. I thought I had one to email me. Maybe it went away. I don't know. I'll have to see that. But that is how you find that. So, like I said, you can find that. Okay, good. Some of you see it. Awesome. So, instead of listing out a bunch of different links, I just have the link tree. It makes it so much easier. Oh, good, Pam. You got your craft club. Yay, Dinah got her craft club. Awesome. I can show you guys if you don't know what Craft Club is. Where's my other piece? Oh. Here's mine. My, my top piece for my uh, banner came off here. Just a second. Let me get it back on. This is our Craft Club for January. It's awesome. It's a, it's a pennant banner that has a magnetic strip on the top and the bottom my top one the magnet is kind of in a weird place I have to fix it but see it's not holding it because I I have a problem with this um, at the top but it's not it's a me problem not a not a banner problem there we go I'm just gonna hold it like this for right now and then you can buy new fabric to go in this magnetic holder which is cool so the january craft club you get the banner you get the stencil you get the black pink and green ink you get a squeegee you get instructions you get all of it so if you want information about craft club you would go to the uh the link for my magnolia website that is there on my link tree all right why is that frozen there we go okay so 
That is that. Yes, hello. Who is on? Is it Adalong? Is that how you say your name? There we go. I had to get my phone to turn backwards. All right. Awesome. Sarah got hers. Yay. That. Oh, you're welcome for explaining Craft Club. Yes. So Craft Club is awesome because it's a complete project for only $22.99 a month. It's a flat rate shipping. I believe it's $5.25 and then tax if you have tax in your area. Um, we do ask that you commit for a minimum of three months. If after three months you're like, eh, this isn't really for me, you can just cancel. No worries. Oh, Anna Marie DeLong. Okay, I see it's your first initial. Yes, I have a club, Gina, and it's awesome. Do you, maybe let's take just a couple seconds to show some of the other past craft club projects. Things like this with a cute jar and a stencil. We've done little beaded tag garlands. This was last month, this little snowman, it's tangled because I just kind of took it down and put it in my basket or my bucket here. It had these little snowmen. Oh my goodness, you get the idea. It had these little snowmen. The, the stencil had the plaid and it had the face with the buttons and then it came with these little pom-poms, super duper cute. Um, in the summer, we've had like a kitchen themed one with kitchen minis and these wooden spoons. So many fun projects. And what's awesome is, like I said, you get everything to make the complete project. And then what you do with it is up to you. If you keep it as part of your decor, if you give it as a gift, who doesn't like getting something handmade from a friend? All right. So what I'm going to make tonight is I'm going to use two of our newer stencils. We have this love one. I did a reel on my Facebook page. I made a tote bag with this one, but we're going to do something different with it today. And then I'm going to make a t-shirt um, with this chosen stencil. And I'm very excited. I don't know if you guys watch the chosen. If you've watched me at all, you know, I love the show and uh, let's see. The 1st, February 1st, that is a week from Thursday. The first three episodes of season four are going to be in the theater, and I'm going to wear this shirt probably with one of my chosen show hoodies to go see it. So we're going to do two projects, and I'm going to start with the surface that I'm going to use this. I'm actually going to use a smaller surface. And we're going to center the stencil so that it's kind of just got the word love and then the flowers that are immediately around it. And I'm going to do something I don't normally do. What I'm going to do is paint the surface. I'm going to run it to the garage and spray it once when I stencil it. Okay, I'm going to stencil the love on top of the paint, the outline. I'm going to run out to the garage to spray it and I'm going to work on the t-shirt and then I'm going to go back and get the sign so we can color it in with some of our uh, chalk markers. Okay, not these, these. These are chalk pens. These are the earth colors and then I have the macaron, macaroon colors. I'm probably going to use these, I think. They're a little softer colors. So that's what we're going to do. So let's paint the, um, my video here is way behind. There we go. Let's paint this. This was just a box, uh, like painting kit. It actually had a Santa Claus picture on the front. I tried to sand it off as best I could downstairs really quickly, but we're going to just paint this with a white background. So I can show you what I'm doing here. Just a quick layer of white. I'm not going to worry about painting the signs, the sides right now. I can come back and do that after we do our crafty fun here. So how is everyone? Did you guys get to a chance to watch last week's YouTube video? Part one of the tiered tray decor. That was really fun to do, and I did a lot of the recording for tomorrow's today, 
and I just am very excited to bring you episode two or part two of this tiered tray series. Uh, yes, the chalk markers are from Magnolia and they are available on my website. Now, what you cannot, the chalk pens cannot be used in the stencil. So they can only be used on our chalkboards, like to write on the chalkboards, um, which I'm going to have a reel coming up later this week. Maybe I'll do it as a short actually here on YouTube. And um, you can use them to write on the chalkboards or you can use them to uh, color in a stenciled image like we're going to do tonight. Okay. All right. Just making sure there's no little, you know, those little paint boogers that like to sometimes get on your pieces here. Okay. Oh, good. You loved that video. Yes. I'm excited for it too. <sighs> the lions. Yes. The lions did win yesterday. I have to say that football is probably the sport I care the least about. I'm excited that people around here are excited, but football is not, it's the closest I got to being a football fan was being in the marching band in high school and being at the football games. But, um, none of our kids played football. My brothers didn't play football. They played baseball. And so we've always been kind of a baseball family. So awesome. All right. So this is painted and it's going to dry. And then when it's dry, we're going to uh, do this stencil. So why don't I kind of help it along a little bit? If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat. I don't know why I lost my chat here. There we go. Um, so... I did not stencil this. This I think I bought at Dollar General, but we do have a stencil like this. It says have a holly jolly, or no, have a, yeah, have a holly jolly Christmas. I'm still using Christmas mugs. <laughs> All right, so I'm just drying this. Um, what I was gonna say is the chalk markers on my website would be found in the accessories category. Okay, in case you're wondering where to find those. There are other sets besides the two that I just showed you. All right. Um, I think, let's get some 400. This is 220, I think. A little too rough for what I want to do. When I paint a wood surface that I'm going to stencil, I like to give it a light sanding. So um, just with this 400, I just like to lightly go over it. Because sometimes when you paint a surface, it ends up with a little bit of a texture. And you really want your surface as smooth as possible when you're going to stencil so that your stencil will adhere down completely to your surface. Okay, nice and smooth. All right, what I forgot to do is bring over my tacky towel. So let me grab that. I have used this stencil once. So it's not brand new, but we still are going to want to fuzz it a little bit. So if you're just hopping on, what we're going to do on this wood sign here is we're going to center this love. I don't even know what the actual name of this stencil is. It's like a floral love. And let's put the backing sheet behind our surface. And then I want to center as best I can. Now the corners are gonna be cut off a little bit, but that's okay. 
I'm gonna try to center this on here as best I can. And then once I have it where I want it, I'm gonna start at the center and press down and out. I want my, every part that is green has adhesive on the back and I want that to be fully stuck down on my surface. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the stencil with black. Thank you, is it Therese? Thank you. I'm gonna just gonna use black chalk paste And it's as easy as spreading, what? Cream cheese on a bagel, peanut butter on a piece of toast. Okay, you're just gonna spread it. You don't have to push hard. I'm going lightly, and then I'm going back to just take off the excess. Turn my squeegee around and go up. Now, if you've never seen these stencils before, they are a reusable mesh stencil. So everywhere that you could see the white surface through the stencil is where your chalk paste is going to go. Okay, it's like a silk screen. It's actually tiny, tiny little holes in the mesh and then wherever you see green is going to stay your background color it's it's keeping it from receiving the chalk paste okay i'm just scraping off some extra here and i could put it right back in my jar okay that's as easy as it is as it is all right now i'm going to grab hold of this Oh, this looks so good. Ooh, and I'm carefully, without dropping it, going to peel off my stencil. Look at how cool that is. It looks like a coloring book page, and that's exactly what we're going to do with it. Let me put my stencil in my water. And we're going to let this dry for just a little bit because I, I need to wait till the chalk paste is dry before I take it out to the garage to spray just a clear matte spray on it because that's gonna seal in the black and allow me to color it in with my chalk pens. Isn't that so fun? So fun. Did you guys see, let me grab the, um, the tote bag I made. So what I did with this is first I took our ink and I watered it down a little bit and I made these colored stripes on our Magnolia tote bag. Then I heat set that. Then I took this same stencil and I did it in glittering black ink over the colors. What do you guys think about that? Isn't that pretty? So this just shows you how versatile the stencils are to be used in so many different ways. And we're gonna make a t-shirt here in just a second with the, with the chosen stencil. Let's give this a little help. Thank you, I'm glad you guys like it. This is such a cute stencil. I love it. And what's great about this stencil is it's not just Valentine's. It could be used for anything. Oh yeah, the tote bags are so fun. And our tote bags are really good quality and they are not expensive at all. But, I mean, you could always get tote bags at Hobby Lobby. Just make sure you use our permanent ink with our stencils because um, you don't want to try using another kind of ink or fabric paint or anything like that 
it'll clog up the, the stencil. I watered down some of our ink, our permanent ink, like I'm going to use on the t-shirt in just a minute. So I'm just drying, I'm just drying this block here that we stenciled the love stencil on. Hi Sandra, welcome. Hi Stephanie, no worries. You guys can always go back and watch the replay of the beginning. Okay. So, like I said, I'm going to do something I normally don't do, but I'm going to run this to the garage to spray the clear spray on it, and then when I come back, we're going to do the t-shirt. The I need this black to get sealed before I can color it with the markers. Okay. Yeah, I definitely cannot spray that in the house because it is, you know, pretty stinky. Pretty stinky stuff, that clear spray. Uh, I use the Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra, Ultra Clear or something like that. Ultra Cover. Um, yeah, I and I use matte usually. If they don't have the matte finish, I do satin. All right, so while that is drying, I'm gonna take, and this stencil is, let's see, I'm going to mark the center of the actual image, the actual stenciled image. Sometimes I fold my stencil in half, but there's a little bit more of an edge on, well, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna center the rectangle. See what I'm talking about? I'm gonna center this. So I want to find the center of that. So it's about nine, nine and a half. So that would be four and three quarters. No, yes, four and three quarters. So I'm just gonna put a little dot on my stencil where that would be right about there and then that's what I'm going to line up here with the center it's almost pretty much lined up now I don't need to fuzz this on my tacky towel because I'm putting it on fabric okay you do not need to fuzz your stencil before stenciling on fabric and I want to try to get this as straight as possible so I'm just kind of setting it down. I'm not really pressing it yet. And I'm just gonna take my ruler here and I'm gonna go from the edge of the image to the corner of the armpit just to see where we're at. Looks like six inches almost exactly. And, hmm. Okay, I need to move this way just a tiny bit. Okay, I think that looks fine. And then we could go from here down. Looks good. Five and a quarter. So now again, I'm going to start from the center and I'm going to press out. Okay. 
I want all the green to be stuck down to my shirt. Oh, and I should mention, inside here, this is one of our ink mats. It is sticky, and so it holds the t-shirt from the inside, and the stencil is sticky and holds it from the outside. So my shirt's not gonna move around while I'm stenciling it. Oh, you know what, Elizabeth? I just eyeball it, <laughs> honestly. I just kinda go down a little bit, and it seems to always work out about right. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess maybe where the image is is about four inches down from the neck. We do have a t-shirt um, guide that tells you, you put it like this and then it shows you where to put it and stuff, but I've actually never used that. Uh, where's my white ink? Okay, hold on, I gotta turn my dealy here. There it is. I got to figure out a better way to display my projects behind me because right now it's just covering up my supplies. All right, let's make sure this is really good and stuck down. I don't want ink to go under the stencil. I just want it to lay where the pink shirt can be seen through the stencil. Um, I'll say this t-shirt is from Hobby Lobby. It's Gildan brand. And what else? I think that's all I can tell you. Oh, it is, oh gosh, tiny print. Uh, that doesn't tell me. Oh, this tag tells me. It is 90, 60% cotton. What? 40% polyester. Okay. So it might shrink a little bit, but it's soft. Okay, when I do ink, I just barely dip my squeegee in the ink. You don't want extra ink. I just want it to go here through the mesh. Once I have the image filled with the ink, I'm going to stop that section. I don't want to keep going over and over. Okay, just a little bit. Now, sometimes with white, I think on this pink it's gonna be fine. Sometimes with white I do end up going over a second time just because sometimes the white, because it's white, and especially if you have a dark color underneath, sometimes it needs like a base coat, what I'm doing here, and then go over again very lightly. But we'll see what, what it looks like. Usually I'm talking like if I'm doing it on like a purple or a blue or even a darker red, it might need another little pass of the color. So I'm just doing a little bit at a time on my squeegee I'm trying to not push the ink under the stencil. I just want it to go in the mesh. You need the insert, or you mean the the um, the ink mat? Is that what you're talking about, uh, Sandra? This T-shirt was from Hobby Lobby. A lot of times, I buy my shirts at um, Walmart. I, the other day, got a sweatshirt from Costco that I'm going to probably do uh, with one of our new spring stencils. Okay, I can see the pink through the white ink a little bit. So I have that first pass that I kind of have already let set there. So now I'm going to do just another light layer of the white on top of that. because I want my letters to be white. And this only really is necessary with white ink. If you want it to be nice and bright. Notice I did not pick up my stencil and then try to reline it up. I just am going one more time over the stencil, 
over the white that I already had there. Okay, and now I'm gonna kind of go over, take any extra. The other thing that the ink mat does is it keeps the ink from going through to the other side of the shirt. Okay, you don't wanna see the reverse image of this on the back of your shirt. Okay. All right, let's just, just wanna peek and see how it looks. If I decide it needs more, I can come back. I love it. It could have maybe been a little brighter white. Now I could let this dry, clean my stencil and line it back up, but I really don't think I need to do that. I think it looks good how it came out. Let me dry my hands and show you guys and see what you think. What do you guys think? Oh, no worries, Gina. You ask all the questions you want. Is this the same stuff as the black? No. Okay, great question. On wood surfaces, we use chalk paste. Okay, when we're doing fabric, glass, ceramics, anything that could be heat set, we do ink. And the way you can tell the difference, ink has, let me move my coffee, ink has a white lid and on the bottom it says permanent ink. Chalk paste always has a black lid, no matter what the color is, and says chalk paste on the back. Okay, great questions. Yes, thank you, Pam. Yep, so now what I'm going to do with my shirt, let me come up here so you can see my face. I'm going to let this dry until tomorrow. Uh, I'll take the ink mat out, and then I'm going to heat set it. So that just means a warm iron. I'll put a piece of parchment paper over my ink, and I'm going to, for five minutes, on warm, I set a timer on my phone, and I just go back and forth. Once this is heat set, once it's dried completely and heat set, I can wash and dry this shirt and the ink will stay. It won't go on um, other things. You can get the paste, the ink, the stencils on my website, monarchmomdiy.com. That will take you to my Magnolia website. Okay? Awesome. Yeah, let me... Um... Oh, hi, Lily! Let me know if you have any questions. We actually have some new spring products coming out very, very soon. This was part of our Valentine release, but obviously this is an anytime image, right? I can wear this all the time. And you know what I'd like to do is, I don't know if you saw, but um, there is a Bible reference on here. 1 Peter 2, 9, and I want to read to you what it says. If you're new to my channel, I am a Christian. I am a pastor's wife. I am very open talking about my faith. Um, we've got a lot of times on here where people need prayer, and we share that with each other. Um, 1 Peter 2, verse 9, it says, okay, but you are not like that. So before it was talking about... Um, Let's see. Re people who reject God. Okay. So verse 9 says, But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. So chosen. I love that. There's a lot of places in the Bible where it talks about... Um, being chosen, that God chose us. He wants a relationship with us. And if you're interested in learning more about that, I suggest you go to my friend and uplines page, um, DIY Dreaming. That's Heidi Scott. She does Christ and Crafting every S Sunday. And just yesterday, she talked about this verse. 
and being chosen by God. So, like I said, we will let this dry. I will heat set it, and then I'll be able to wash and wear it. Awesome. You guys are asking great questions. Okay, I'm going to set this over here. And I'm pretty sure that's not completely dry out there yet. So I'm going to show you again the chalk pens that we're going to use. Now, I think this is the set I'm going to use on that little wood sign. These are the macaroon colors. You can see why they're kind of like pastel-y a little bit. So let's take these out. I honestly don't think I've used any of these. So let me get something, piece of card stock here. So it says for use on metal, glossy board, LED boards, plastic, glass, and non-porous surfaces. Now, wood normally is porous, but because I sprayed it, what that does, that clear spray closes up the pores of the wood. The, the paint helped as well. So the paint and the clear spray um, sealed the sealed the pores of the wood so now i can use this marker yes you can use a heat press what i want to show you is these markers have two types of tips there's a chisel tip if i pull that out and flip it around it's a regular bold tip now i'm not sure um i think i'm gonna go with chisel tip because it's got the point but what you're gonna want to do to get these started is you're gonna want to shake it and it even tells you on there so we're going to shake it, just gets the paint in there moving, and then we're going to push on the tip gently, just like when you use paint markers. Okay, let me show you what I'm doing. And you'll be able to see when you're pushing, when so I can see some of the paint color is starting to come to the tip now. Ooh, that's pretty okay and then it says right and recap water-based so it's easy to clean that's why on a chalkboard you can write with these and then clean them off I got to come back to my page on my phone here so I can see your well there it is see your any other questions about the markers or whatever kits coming on Wednesday I don't Patty um, but uh, supposedly they're gonna be some new Valentine kits DIY kits um, I imagine tomorrow night in our creator meeting they will tell us what those will be and then we can let people know and then midnight tomorrow they'll be available all right, I'm just gonna, probably gonna use most of these colors. Mm, let's just get them all ready because then that gives my uh, wood piece more time to, uh, oh, I must, oh no, that's just the color of the tip. So I'm excited to try these out. I'm excited to color in that love stencil that we just did on that wood there we go I really didn't shake that one that long did I on epoxy um I would oh I gotta turn this one around for some reason it's got the other one there I would think so, um, but then you'd want to seal it, or or it would just wipe off. On my wood piece, I use. You know what? When I go grab my, when I go grab the sign, I will grab the can as well, so I can show you what it looks like. It's Rust-Oleum. I buy it at Walmart in the paint in the spray paint section. And it's uh, just a clear spray. You know what I could also do is grab one of our, I 
could grab one of our chalkboards and show you how these would work on those as well. A lot of our surfaces are chalkboards. Um, that's usually the best to start with, with chalk paste, because like this, so this is one of our chalkboard surfaces, and I did a couple of our stencils on here with white chalk paste, and it dries semi-permanent, but if I spritzed some water on here, this chalk paste would reactivate and I would be able to wipe it off and do something else on my chalkboard. So that's what's really great about the chalk paste is um, you can you can take it off the chalkboard and then redo a different stencil on that chalkboard. So a lot of times when people are getting started with Magnolia, I tell them to, you know, get a DIY kit that has a chalkboard and a stencil, and then you can add new stencils as you go, like for different holidays or seasons. Ooh, this color's pretty. It's like a mint. It's almost like the color of my hoodie here. Did I tell you guys the story about this hoodie? I can't remember if I said that on Facebook or on YouTube. When we were coming home from the cruise, our flight to Grand Rapids got canceled. We could only get as far as Chicago. Um, but we were going to then drive to Grand Rapids, but we didn't have our winter coats with us because we left them in Grand Rapids. So we each bought a hoodie to wear in the car to just have an extra layer to not be cold. Okay, so I have all my eight colors of my macaroon chalk pens ready to go. Again, this is the earth set. There's also a metallic set. That would be really pretty with this stencil as well. Um, okay, I'm going to go grab the box and the can of spray to show you. Be right back. It is dry. So here's the sign. This is what I use. Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover. I usually like matte clear, but the satin is the next, next shiniest, I guess. Okay. Super exciting. Okay. So now what I have to decide is what colors I'm going to do. So basically now I'm just kind of coloring. Let's see how this works. Ooh, that's really smooth. Now, I, I want to be careful not to go over the black lines because it will cover up the black. So that's why I'm glad I'm using the chisel tip side because it's got the point. Now, I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch me do this whole thing. But just want to give you an idea of what you can do. I mean, this would be fun to do as a class. You could um, have the boxes already painted. Now, hold on. I want to try something. Because, yes, because I sprayed this, I went a little bit over the black, so I just got a little piece of paper towel wet, and I can wipe the chalk marker off and then go back and fix it. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, you could do um, where you had... Or you just do it in multi-steps, right? You let you give everybody a black, a blank, 
wood surface like this and then they paint the background whatever color they want now if they're going to want to color it in like this they should probably do white um so maybe you do have that step done ahead of time have everybody's block painted white already and then they could stencil maybe you have a couple choices of stencil and um and then once it's dry and you've sprayed it, everybody can just use the markers and color it in however they want. Now, what I'm gonna do is once I've finished coloring this whole thing, I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna spray it again so that my color will now be permanent. Hope that makes sense. If you have questions about that, let me know. All right. I'm not seeing comments again for some reason. Okay. So what do you think? Should I do all the letters the same color or should I do them different? Kind of. I'm kind of thinking different colors. You guys still there? And then I got all these, all these gorgeous flowers I can do too. Do what makes you happy. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, this is kind of fun. I'm, I've never done this before. And I've only used a couple of my chalk pens on actual chalkboards. But this is really fun to use them to color in a stenciled image. Who is wanting to try this? So fun. It does kind of look like the 70s, doesn't it? And, you know, so, okay, I've used that stencil twice now. And because I clean my stencils, right now it's in my water so that it doesn't dry uh, with the paste in it. But um, I sh I'll be able to get a lot of more a lot more uses out of that stencil. Okay. Oh yeah, Sierra, this would be awesome. Just make sure, like I said, you spray the black because otherwise, when you start coming in with the other color, it's gonna make the it's going to make, it would make the black smear if it wasn't heat set. Okay, I'm just going to start coloring on one of these flowers just to give you an idea. Now, there are black lines inside this flower petal. Those will probably show through this pink a little bit. But because I'm putting chalk paste on top of that black, it's going to cover it up a little bit. I think. We'll see what happens when it kind of dries. Fun, fun. Thanks, Gina. So 
let me know if you want direct links to the pens, to the stencil, um, either of the stencils that I used, the chosen or this loved one. You could just put that in the chat. The only thing is, actually, you'd have to wait until after. For some reason, I have a hard time watching the replay of the chat. But you could also just message me. Send me an email or something if you can't find what you're looking for. Both of these stencils would be in the Valentine category because they just came out. Okay, just look at how fun. Isn't this so fun? And then once that's dry, I can even come in a little bit more around the edges there. Let's do... Let's do the V with this kind of bright pink. <sighs> Flower power vibes, yes, for sure. Well, and you could do this on a big round surface and color in the entire stencil. We only used part of the stencil because this surface was actually smaller than the stencil. But you could do this entire stencil on like a white painted uh, round surface that we have, a 15 inch round. And ooh, that would that would take a while to color in, but that would be really fun. It like adds a whole nother dimension to the Magnolia stenciling. I'm not gonna wanna go to bed until I finish this. I might be kind of late. What do you guys think? You getting tired? Oh, Janice, they're on my website, monarchmomdiy.com. Okay, if you put that in your Google uh, bar, it'll take you to my Magnolia website. And the pens are in the accessories category. Yes, great therapy. I think I need a green letter. Let's do this bright green for the O. Ooh, that is bright, isn't it? It's like a lime sherbet color, sherbet. Hi, Natty. And again, these pens I'm using are the Macaroon set. And then the other ones I showed you were the Earth set. They're just a little bit uh, more basic colors, I guess. I don't know. Kind of your primary red, green, blue, purple. Then you got like a gold, a peach, and a brown. Earth is what they're called. I think this would look really pretty with the metallic ones. I think I need to get the metallic ones. I don't have those yet. I think I need to get those now. Now that I've discovered doing this with stencils, I think I'm going to want to do more. It's very, very fun. Okay, you are welcome. So I'm gonna finish coloring all these flowers and I also see that each, okay, the, the L is almost done dry. 
um, each letter has like an outline around it. So I think I want to outline my blue L with purple. So I'm just going to try to go really skinny in here with, with the point here of my chisel tip with the purple around the blue without covering up too much of the black. So fun and you know what even if you cover up a little bit of black it's fine like I said you can wet it and wipe it off if you want probably would have to do it pretty much right away if you're gonna change something but Okay. Can you see the purple around the blue there? Love this. So much fun. I know, right? Everybody loves to color. It just like brings you back to your, your childhood. All right. Well, I think I'm going to sign off again. Let me know if you need help finding anything. Um, the pens are in the accessories on monarchmomdiy.com. This stencil... And this stencil that I did on my shirt are in the Valentine section. And remember, you're going to want ink for fabric and chalk paste for hard surfaces. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. I had fun. I hope you had fun. And you can always email me, monarchmomdiy at gmail.com if you have any questions. All right. New YouTube video premieres tomorrow night, part two of the Tiered Tray series. So take care.